Hello and welcome to Loud Creations. Today I'm making some more mead. Uh, it is the new moon in Sagittarius, and this is the schedule that I'm on for starting meads. I start them on the new moon, rack them around the full moon, and then I'm going to let them sit for six months. So this one, I am going to be making a lavender lemon balm hazelnut mead, and I've already got for this recipe, I have some tea going. Um, I used 20 grams of lemon balm that I had dried this summer. It's from my yard. And then I used 15 grams of lavender. And I'm going to let this steep for kind of a long time, maybe 30 minutes. Um, you can see it's still very, very hot. Um, so this, this is kind of the base for it. And in my second video where I do the racking and everything, I get into why I chose the herbs I chose and what the medicinal use and magical uses are for the herbs as well as folklore. I got my lemon balm lavender tea going. I'm also going to add approximately three and a quarter pounds of local honey from a beekeeper in my neighborhood. And... Then this time I am using Lauvin EC1118. I don't know if that's going to show up. I would hold this up to the camera, but for whatever reason, it's not working. So the yeast that I'm using goes up to approximately 18%, but I am going for a 14, 13, 14% mead, and I'm going to be stabilizing it for the first time. Um, I, in previous meads that I've made, I used, um, I have a sous vide and I did pasteurization to stabilize the mead to stop fermentation. This time I'm going to be using, um, God, what is it called? Why can't I remember? I'm having issues with focusing with this camera. So if I'm a little blurry, I apologize. Um, but back to what I was saying. I'm going to be stabilizing this mead using potassium sorbate, I believe, what it called, and Captain tablets. But I will be covering that more in my video when I'm doing the racking and putting the mead into a secondary uh, vessel for, for uh, to complete fermentation and aging. So, okay, so what do I have here? So I got my yeast. I'm going to be doing that. Uh, I'm going to have... I do have go firm. I'll be adding half a teaspoon of go firm to some of this warm tea to get this going. And then we'll make a yeast slurry uh, once the water has cooled down enough so it won't kill the, the yeast. Uh, the other ingredients are I'm going to be putting in some of my dried lemon peel. Uh, I'm going to do this in primary. I might add some lemon juice in secondary just to balance out the flavors a little bit. Um, I also have some wine tannin or, or black tea that I might add uh, to balance out those flavors too, but I'm not going to do that for primary. I'm just going to go with very basic, putting in the, the water, the honey, the tea, and my lemon along with my yeast slurry. Uh, and the, the other ingredient that I'm going to be adding probably once it's done fermenting is a little bit. I'm making my own hazelnut extract. Now, I've never done this before, so I'm not sure how this will turn out. But this has been sitting for a month and a half. So by the time I use it, it'll have been over two months. And hopefully it will give it a nice hazelnut note. The other thing that I'll be doing is adding two and a quarter pounds of the honey that I mentioned. I already poured it in here and weighed it all out. I plan on putting some of the hot tea in here to loosen this up so that it doesn't take me an hour to pour this into the fermenter. So I have that all ready to go. And yeah, I think I think we can get to it. I don't know if I forgot anything. Let's think here. Okay, so just to go over the recipe one more time, we got 15 grams of la dried lavender, 20 grams of dried lemon balm that I am making into about with a half gallon of boiling water to make a strong tea. And then I have Go Firm and EC1118 yeast to make my yeast slurry to add 
into primary. I have a little bit of lemon peel I'm going to toss in there. And I think, I think that's it for this, this part of the recipe that I just made up. So we'll see how this, this turns out. I'm going to start out by pouring some of this tea water into my glass, and then I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of go firm just to get that going. Wake those up. Smells so good. Well, I have my teaspoon, my half a teaspoon that I sanitize. So everything here has been sanitized using Iostar sanitization fluid, which I have on the floor in a bucket right now. Anyway, so here's my half teaspoon of Go Firm. And I'm going to use my little spoon to stir this up. Okay. And I'm going to set this aside somewhere. Where am I going to put this where I won't spill it? That's the key, because I tend to just be in the moment, and then I knock stuff over, and then it's no good. Up there. Um, let's see. What I'm going to also do is fill this once I've taken the tea out of here I'm going to put some cold water in here to mix in so that we don't have to I don't have to sit and wait for this to cool off to put the yeast in but as it is now I'm going to go ahead and take I need something to put it in there okay so I'm going to go ahead and take this tea bag out I'm going to use the spoon to kind of get get all the goodies out of here squeeze this bag Now, lemon balm is a nervine, and so it helps with relaxation, but it also has that lemony Fruit Loop smell that's really uplifting and mood enhancing. So I love lemon balm, and it has all these other properties that I'll get into in my next video. But um, yeah, this tea smells so nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this hot water into this honey and hope for the best. Because this honey has been sitting for a while and it's pretty thick. And it would literally take me an hour to pour this into the gallon carboy. So I'm going to put a little bit of this in there. I wish I had grabbed a bigger spoon, but I didn't. So I'm going to use my little spoon. Just to stir this up. It is so thick. I mentioned this in my other video, but up until the last few batches, I had been using the raw local Washington honey from Costco, which you know I had I had good results with, but I have to say. If you have access to a local beekeeper or some some fresh honey, um, it really does it does make a difference in the flavor. This is still extremely thick, so I'm actually going to put more. I hope this doesn't turn into a disaster. We'll see. Some more. Stir this up. So I'm going to just keep doing this and I will be right back with my funnel and my carboy. Okay, so I got my honey and half the tea mixed together. And we're going to now, of course, somehow I lost my big metal funnel. So I'm stuck with my little teeny tiny funnel. But I think we'll be okay because this is pretty watery. And I'm just going to pour this in and I'll be right back. Okay, so I did that. I spilled a little bit, but it wasn't so bad. Uh, it poured in. It Instead of an hour, it took me about one minute. So I highly recommend. Most people who are making me probably have figured this out by now. But 
um, heating up your honey a little bit, not too much because you don't want to kill anything off, um, but just mixing it with some warm water or setting the container in warm water that the honey's in just to soften it up really does help. I made much less of a mess this way. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is pour the rest of my tea in and then I'm going to go get some cold water to mix uh, in here to cool it off because this is going to be really hot and actually I don't even know how much room I'm going to have for cold water. Let's see. Okay, so I'm back with some cold water. I'm going to actually add some to my slurry here just to cool it off so I can move forward with this activity here. <laughs> and I have to wait because the water that I had put in here is pretty darn hot. And give that a minute. I'm going to pour the cold water in here. And this might have to sit for a while because. I leave room for the slurry too. So I'll do a little bit more. Okay. This is probably going to be filled too high. That's what that comes down to. Uh -huh. Get my bung so I can shake this up. I'm actually going to move this back so I don't spill it. <laughs> be right back. Okay, I put my bung in there and I'm just going to shake this up a little bit, but I think it should be mostly mixed. And that's also adding oxygen, oxygenating the fluid so that the yeast have oxygen to do their thing. I'm going to go ahead and shake this up a little bit more and then we'll be back to do the next step. Okay, so since this is still pretty darn hot and the slurry is still pretty darn hot, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let this cool for, gosh, I don't know, however long it takes. And then uh, until it's about room temperature, body temperature, body temperature. So I want it around 90, 95 to 98.6 is what is recommended on here. So we need to get this down to body temperature, which might be a little while. So I will be back in a flash. I'm back. Uh, this, I decided this, this feels like it's safe to put the yeast in. So I'm going to go ahead and pitch my yeast into here and make a slurry. And then I'm going to use about half the packet. Uh, and then I'm going to set it aside and let them wake up a little bit. Ah, uh, so that's what I'm doing. Go ahead. Pour in. Oh, I just hope. We hear you. We shall see. Pour in half the yeast. This up. Use my little spoon to stir this up, and then I'm going to set it aside, I don't know, probably like 15 minutes. Here we go, guys. Hopefully, they're happy in there and this isn't too hot because, yeah, I don't think it's too hot. We shall see. Set that aside. And then I also have my lemon peel that I was going to add. So I'll go ahead and just add it now. Because why not? What do we got here? We'll do a couple of chunks. And good. I'm going to shake this up some more and try to cool it off. It's still really hot, so we're going to be here for a while. 
So another thing, if your fluid is too warm, then it'll throw off your gravity reading too. So it's a lot of waiting, feeling impatient. It's kind of like waiting for your mead to be ready, but not months. Months and months. Alrighty, so I've now put this in a bucket of ice to try to get it to cool off faster. Um, and we're getting there. We're getting there. I gotta say, this smells so good. Like, I love the smell of lavender, but that mixed with the lemon balm is really nice. So, I have a feeling this one's going to be pretty tasty. If you're into that kind of thing. If you're not, then... It'll taste like alcoholic tea. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so I think this is cool enough. I'm going to... Yeah, it's pretty cold now. Bucket of ice. You are impatient. Or just you don't want to wait an hour for a gallon of hot to cool then uh, ice bucket worked wonders what i'm gonna do next is i'm gonna pour in my slurry and then we'll go ahead and get our gravity reading i'm using my little funnel because if i don't i was spilling everywhere so i'm gonna stir this up because a lot of times it gets stuck on the bottom Here's our yeast slurry. Hopefully I didn't kill the yeast. Whoa. Whoa. Ha <laughs> uh. All right, well, I could already see that there's gonna be a problem here. I uh, did not gauge how much fluid I should put in here. And this is definitely gonna overflow. So I'm going to pour some of this out, I think. First, I'm going to mix in my slurry, siphon some of this out. God, this, I am just not, not firing on all cylinders today. I think that's what, what it comes down to. I'm trying to grab from the bottom. So I don't take too much of my slurry. Okay. So I'm out like half a glass mead, but I think this is a much better level. This even this is kind of like, you know, if, if the yeast start off really happy, then it might go, but then we can do a blow off tube and I can show how to do that. I'll try to make make it a positive. All right, so among all that, okay, I'm gonna wipe out my mess. Oh my gosh, it's all over my lap. Yeast, little yeasties all over the place. I'm gonna go ahead and do the gravity reading. Okay. Oh, it smells good. <laughs> Put that going for us. Oh man, this is gonna be sweet. Okay, so I put this, uh, the fluid in, okay, I'm checking the hydrometer. You like, it's good to give it a little spin to get the bubbles off. And uh, I can't read through this thing. I need to get a glass. I highly recommend getting, this is plastic and it's hard to read through. So I'll, I think I'm gonna get a glass one. I mean, I know glass breaks. All right, so 1.122 original gravity. I'm going to put my thong in there, get an airlock. Max. All right, so I have my airlock. 
put I put sanitization fluid in there. Um, you can use alcohol too. I, when I first did it, I just put water in there. Everything seemed to turn out fine, but I don't know. I'm going to clean this off a little because I spilled frothy yeast slurry everywhere. And I have a rubber band because I have this feeling, unless I killed the yeast by putting it in uh, the cup when it was still too hot. I have a feeling this is gonna this is gonna be really happy in a minute. So that is it for our lemon balm lavender hazelnut mead. Okay, so we are done with step one. I'm gonna go put this in my closet and let it ferment for a couple weeks, and then I'm gonna come back and check in on it, rack it into another container possibly add some more ingredients and stabilize the mead. So be looking out for part two coming out in a couple weeks. I hope this video is useful and I'll see you next time. Thank you.